Um, oh, you right, Luno? Yeah, I'm a bit stressed out and I'm trying to just relax and play this new game called Concord, but I can't seem to get it working. What do you mean it's been taken down? That is ridiculous. Let me peek into the cosmos and see what happened. Oh, what a load of wank. This honestly might be the biggest failure in gaming since E.T. on the Atari 2600. Well, yeah, I know that caused the gaming crash of 1983, nearly collapsing the entire industry, but Concord's failings could have similar drastic impacts on the industry as a whole, or at least, I oh, bloody hope so. So for anyone who's in the dark as much as I was, Concord is, well, sorry, was a first-person hero shooter from Firewalk Studios and published by Sony. And on face value, its only crime was being a hero shooter in the year of our Lord 2024, but this isn't anything new. Unfortunately, shitty games are released every day. This isn't out of the ordinary. Concord was launched and then subsequently removed from existence within two weeks of its initial release. And this could be largely due to its double digit play account within days of release in a genre that requires substantial play accounts to even have a chance of existing. But if we go deeper, the worse it gets. Something that sets this game apart is the fact that it was developed over nearly eight years. Now, games do take a long time to make, let's say on average around two to five years to prototype, create systems, are sound, playtest and polish. But regardless of experience and how many games you've shipped in the past, the process of creating any game is a long and difficult journey. But eight years is still a lot longer than average. So why is this? Because looking at Concord, it doesn't look like it would take eight years to make, but eight years in development doesn't mean that there were artists and programmers just sitting at their desk chipping away at it the whole time. More than likely, they probably got stuck in the iteration process attempting to capture the magic of another specific game, I'm sure you can guess which one. Yeah, Paladins, of course, Ludo. See, attempting to grasp why another game succeeded and resonated with players is a difficult task at the best of times. Some games even forgetting how to do it themselves, I'm looking at you, Overwatch. But at least Firewalk Studios had the time and seemingly the money to actually attempt this prototyping. Wait, what was their budget again, Ludo? Okay, see, I have to have all of this info handed to me because the game doesn't exist anymore. So, over a hundred million dollars. Sorry, what? With not including marketing, that makes this one of the most expensive games ever made that wasn't an MMO or a huge open world RPG experience. And usually, games are this expensive to produce because the sheer scale that is required for those games to simply function, but this was a hero shooter with only 16 characters and 12 maps on release, and it took them eight years, costing over a hundred million dollars what? You could have made 100 individual million dollar indie games rather than making, I don't know, nothing? How is this possible? Uh, now, this is monumental. It might just be the biggest failure I've ever seen in the games industry. Yeah, now there have been other big name failures, but their costs, reception and even sales have never been on this level of debauchery. Let's compare it to E.T. on the Atari 2600, probably the best example of a game that failed so hard that it is widely considered to be the catalyst for the gaming crash of 1983, nearly killing the entire industry. Well, yeah, until Nintendo came to the rescue. E.T. was rushed into development to meet a holiday sale deadline, and I mean rushed. From beginning to end, giving the designer five weeks to complete the project, and due to development constraints, Atari decided to skip the testing phase entirely and rush it to market, leaving this dark stain on the industry and utterly destroying Atari. But E.T. and Concord are two extremes of the same problem. E.T. was rushed out to meet demand, short development time, low cost and low effort in service of the product's perceived demand, and Concord was a game given a seemingly infinite budget and development time in service of chasing a trend. But both of these embarrassingly have comparable sales, but infinitely different costs. So how does something like this happen in the first place? <laughs> Well, yeah, usually I'd agree. Looking at a lot of these situations, it's easy to point the fingers at the publishers and say that they're the problem and you'd be right most of the time. Greedy publishers naively obtain company to try and push life service experiences down players' throats, but the actual story seems to be a bit less black and white than that. Remember, this game was in development for nearly eight years and Sony only bought the company in 2023, six years deep into the development cycle. So Sony isn't the main issue here. It was probably monsters. Well, no, not literal monsters. That's the name of the company that helped incubate Concord for many years before Sony acquired them. They are called probably monsters, which is probably the dumbest name I've ever heard. Well, apart from fucking triangle strategy. Anyway, it's likely that pressures from these monsters could have influenced the direction and shifts in the game's focus to where it is today, but maybe the issue goes deeper. And I hate to say it, 
Was part of the issue the makeup of the dev team? During any development cycle, things come up that require attention or time investment to fix, such as upgrading engines from Unreal 4 to 5, which would inadvertently lead to a shift in how the art pipeline works and then because of that, cause an artistic alteration overall. During prototyping and playtesting, mechanical focuses can also morph based on feedback and responses to external competitors' successes or failings. And these things happen, and by any means, this was not an inexperienced team working on Concord. Key members were responsible for shipping games from such beloved franchises as Call of Duty, Destiny, Apex Legends, and Halo. But sometimes, too much experience can be its own curse. <laughs> Our sponsors are experienced in tabletop emulation. Was that your lazy attempt at an ad segue? Oh, Jesus. This video is brought to you by Worlds of Aria. Want to experience the choice-driven thrills, betrayals, and hilarity of tabletop RPGs without all the setup? Then jump into Worlds of Aria, the cooperative RPG adventure full of twists, turns, and undoubtedly some natural ones to get your blood flowing. Choose from one of 12 characters and party with up to three of your friends via local or online multiplayer. Complete with a friend pass that only requires one person to own the game. Will you act together to try to solve the various fantasy scenarios or embrace your inner wildcard, betray them all at the last second, and possibly get uninvited to several upcoming weddings, birthday parties, and Arbor Day celebrations. Oh no. The choice is yours, but don't worry. You can replay scenes to discover their multiple endings and various secrets. So maybe Arbor Day is back on the table. Worlds of Aria launches on September 24th on PC, so head on over to the Steam page to learn more today. Yeah, all right, fair. That segue, like, halfway made sense, kind of. Anyway, with so much pedigree in a startup, it's common to just assume that your idea is correct, and due to the dev team's size, which was reportedly at least 150 people, each department would have needed their own lead or producer who would have been undoubtedly just as experienced and talented. Now, a handful of talented people in charge of their own subdivision of the team that equally think their decisions are the correct ones is a recipe for disaster. People can be overruled, coerced, or even outright ignored in service of their lead's vision that might not even line up with the whole, causing delays, infighting, and needless back and forth. Office politics can crumble any project in a heartbeat, and in this case, kill it slowly over a decade. Now, I wasn't on the dev team for Concord, and understandably, these devs are being quiet about anything internal, as they should be. It's none of gamers' business, but I've seen this and have friends in the AAA space that see this happening upon the daily, in projects big and small. Ego can be a terrible thing, and I honestly feel for every single person involved in this project, I think it's impossible to put the blame on the developers and artists themselves, as they were probably just following orders, but for the people helming the project, it can be a different story. Now, I'm not trying to throw any shade at all, but the common excuse of meddling from publishers will only get you so far. At the end of the day, the project was kind of doomed from the start because of how nebulous the goals were. Trend chasing in AAA is nothing new, but Concord was especially in trouble based on the specific type of game it was trying to emulate. Hero shooters, or any game that includes FOMO-style battle passes, thrive off of making that game your one and only game, and their systems are designed to encourage that. Even if Concord came out two months after Overwatch, it wouldn't even stand a chance in competing because they have to compete. You have to effectively steal players from those other games, and to do that, you either need a strong IP or creative gameplay elements, and Concord's standout back-of-the-box selling point was, what? <coughs> Weekly in-game CGI cutscenes. Right? Players are invested in these other games, and to top it all off, they're all free to play. Why would people drop 40 quid on a game that none of their friends want to touch because they're too invested in the latest Hello Kitty online cosmetic drops? Trend chasing in the AAA market due to their cost to develop and subsequent pricing never works. Look at Marvel Avengers, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, or Anthem. And the worst thing about all of this is just how much it wastes, not just money and time, but the potential of these insanely talented developers and artists to churn out middling, mildly infuriating nothings rather than allowing them to take a percentage of the budget and produce some truly incredible things. But no, big business is choking the art out of this industry, and I'm not just talking about big megacorps like Sony. The pursuit of profit over progress is not just starting players, it's also killing developers. Success in the games industry is all about timing and luck, and chasing trends just shrinks that window for success to an infinitely small point if you're not timely, and game dev is anything but timely. 
This is just the gaming crash again, but in reverse. It's not churning out games in a few months to the point where consumers can't trust whether a game is good or not, it's watching a studio take 8 years to make a game that effectively doesn't come out at all and is targeting an audience that no longer exists. Both of these extremes lead to consumers losing faith in the art form they want to enjoy, and hopefully Concord opens the eyes of a lot of devs and publishers to the dangers of chasing trends. But the worst part of all of this is the games that would benefit the most from these lessons are likely stepped in so far into development that should they wait no more, returning would be as tedious as Goa. Yeah, it was Macbeth. I can be cultured, you tit. But what do you think? Did you actually manage to give this game a go while it was alive? The fucking thing crashed my PC three times and then was removed from stores, so yeah. And what do you feel is the biggest gaming failure in gaming history? Let us know down below, because we would love to discuss this with you. Alright, Ludo, say goodbye. Okay, bye guys.